Yes, yeah, so if you've watched my recent video about Gecko Linux, you'll know Gecko Linux, of course, was open source and made easy. Well, the same developer has gone ahead and done the same with Debian and released Spiral Linux. And what Spiral Linux is, it's Debian Linux, but focusing on out of the box simplicity and using only official Debian package repos. And I'm sure there's someone there thinking, and I thought the same thing, really? Do we really need another Debian distro or Debian distro? Like, come on. Well, this one's a little bit different for the simple fact of because they only really use Debian packages, if this distro was to stop, then in theory we should be able to continue updating it through the official Debian repos and it would just continue functioning as per normal where some of the other Debian distros have made quite a lot of changes. If they were to disappear, then we would have a big problem. Um, looking at from what I've been able to see, uh, similar stuff as uh, Gecko, you know, some, uh, again, pre-installed media codecs, virtual box support out the box, uh, optimal power management with TLP, uh, Installable and live DVD and USB images, um, um, and this of course is it uses Battery S uh, and Snapper snapshots, which is actually pretty nice for Debian distro out of the box, and of course as well, uh, it's based on Debian stable, so you shouldn't have any issues, uh, and uses some of the backports. But I believe if one wants to move up to Debian testing you can um, change uh, the branches to a testing one stable with a couple of clicks. So, yeah, what we're going to do is take a look at one of these uh, distros, or should I say one of these spins, and compare it to Debian. So, yeah, let's carry on. So, as I like to say, another day, another Linux distro, but... Now, the last distro we looked at was, of course, Gecko Linux, and the author, thank you very much, I gave some comments um, about the distro here and there, so really appreciate it. But the author's also gone ahead and created another distro called Spiral Linux, and if you wonder, what is Spiral Linux? Spiral Linux is, yes, it's another Debian distro, but done by the same creator, so... What I've done is gone ahead and gotten their Cinnamon edition, and it is based on Debian or Debian. And really interested in trying out this distro for the simple fact of I believe they use a couple of backports, and also, as stated before, if Spiral Linux stops being made tomorrow. You can continue to update the system and continue to use it as per normal, which is actually pretty nice. A lot of other distros, of course, don't allow you to do that. Of course, Gecko allows it as well. Now, in the space of Debian-based distros, there's no shortage. I mean, heck, there's a list from here to the end of eternity. So I really wanted to see what makes this different. And, of course, great to see it immediately picks everything up here. Um... The reason I chose Cinnamon Desktop was just because it's something a bit different than usual. And the installer is Calamari, so a nice easy way to install Debian as well. I'm not really too worried about the region here. Just choose a random region. Keyboard, erase a disk. I'm not going to do a swap, but it offers PTFS, XFS, x 4 F2FS. File systems, uh, just type in details. I've just got to go to Debian. And, uh, you know, uh, Spiral Linux, of course, has some things in common with its, I suppose you could say, cousin, Gecko. Um, it has advanced codecs installed of course um, non-free codecs and 
I think it's also important to remember Debian out of the box, even the non free version, can be a tad of a pain. That's why a lot of distros take Debian and it has a fantastic solid base and make something a little bit more easier to work with. And again, this does exactly the same thing. And what's nice as well, it actually takes snapshots. So, really nice to have a distro that's not an arch based distro that uses snapshots. Yes, any distro technically can use snapshots, right? Uh, Open Susie Tumbleweed is quite popular for it. Arch, as I've already mentioned, Garuda, a lot of those distros do it out of the box. Not a lot of Debian distros do it out of the box. It's, it, why? Who knows why? It's because no one really expects something to go wrong with a Debian or Debian. It's usually so quite rock solid. Here, of course, it's just busy installing Calamari's. I installing via calamari should i say so we're gonna give that a couple of minutes here uh, by default not really too many changes have actually done to cinnamon desktop which is nice clean and as you can see here basic same defaults uh, vlc clementine pulse audio uh, additional drivers i believe it handles as well out of the box so pretty, pretty, pretty decent. What I'm going to do is, to be fair, pause the video, get this installed. After it's installed, we'll look at it more. Okay, so it's been installed, and let's give it a quick reboot. So, yeah, uh, reading on the website, definitely great to see how the owner or maker of this distro does also seem to pretty much enjoy Debian as well and it's great to see um, a newer kernel 5.18 as well so that should be more user friendly with newer hardware let us log in and nice and quick Okay, it actually picks up you running the virtual machine. No graphics acceleration, pretty great there. So what I want to look at is a couple of things. So let's first go here. And let's change this preference a little bit. And make it dark and so it's actually easier to read. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Cool. So first I'm going to start off and check how much memory we're using. Not So out of the 4 gigs, it's only using 810 megs. Not, not bad. That's cinnamon for you. Um, free space, not much. It's used about 28% out of the 20 gig hard drive space we've given it. So you set most at about 5.4 gigs. And we did mention the kernel earlier, 5.18. And yeah, looks like it got compiled in June. And another thing that's nice, of course, about Spiral, same as Debian, sorry, same as Gecko, is different versions you can opt to download as well if you want. No um, KDE versions, they're all out there. Uh, let's look at the additional drivers. Okay, so really great to see. And uh, this is quite often um, well, what Ubuntu is more popular for this type of interface. And you can see here, it's got fast track um, backports here of additional software bullseye as well. So some additional updates or future software that is stable and gets back ported backwards especially with updates is pretty useful different keys developer options as well and it's various options from to download from the main server from other servers as well um pretty cool and then software store ah, 
Okay. So we have Synaptic Package Manager, which if you forgot what Synaptic looks like, it is this. The old traditional package manager before all of these additional software centers came in place. And by default, it has the GNOME software center. And it looks like there's quite a lot of good support for flat hub and flat packs in this distro as well. So if you like that type of thing, um, instead of the default repos, great option here. Uh, who's going to use this? Well, if you want to get set up and running quickly with Debian, quickly, here it's Bullseye. And you don't want to worry that if the distro maintainer stops making it or whatever happens, that you're going to be left high and dry. Not at all. You can install this, apply your relevant uh, updates automatically, and you can continue using this out the box. And of course, Bullseye is going to be supported still for a couple of years. So no need to really worry. Um, we have devices that have, need additional firmware. There's a firmware installer as well. Software catalog is updating. Generally, I know software catalog is a little slow. I've always found that with a uh, you know, software center. Hmm. It would be interesting to know why they chose the GNOME software center, although I suppose these days, you don't have many options, really. You don't want to go and install and necessarily KDE's uh, Discover and then have all sorts of conflicting and unneeded libraries. This is pretty valid point, although it's going to take pretty ages. So, yeah, if you use this, we'll be interested to hear from you. And, yeah, if you have any comments or something, let us know. Bye for now.